Welcome to the 25-8 podcast. I am Mark Denebaum, and I am here with the, uh, uh, Stacy. Hi. <laughs> what you? Hi. It is, it is 1248 in the AM when we're doing this open for this Lord of the Rings long podcast. So about, I, look, I said to Stacy a couple of weeks ago, I'm like, hey, let's think about starting up the podcast. Maybe you should come on and, you know, are you interested? And she was like, yeah. And I'm like, all right, you get the guests. <laughs> <laughs> so she said, hey, we can have my friend Jesse come down. And uh, I didn't really realize who Jesse was. <laughs> Do you want to? <laughs> Well, I mean, Jesse is somebody that I always because it like, was because because you always refer to him as like ah my friend Jesse, you know, like Uncle Jesse on Uncle- Full House. <laughs> well, he's not Uncle Jesse, um, <laughs> but um, Jesse is amazingly awesome and super talented. Um, he is the son of Dee Snyder from Twisted Sister. Okay, so that's where. I didn't realize the twist, <laughs> the twist, but I, I remember Jesse because I watched his, their, his family's reality show, um, growing up twisted. I was a huge fan of his for rock the cradle on MTV when he went up against all these, you know, all these other, um, artists, children. Um, and he did an amazing job and I was always a huge fan, like musically and just thought that like the whole Snyder family, like mostly his mom, I was always looking up to his mom. Um, but the whole family was just like creative and crazy, but like still like thoughtful. And, and I was always a fan of their music and I just always loved Jesse. And it was really cool that we actually like got to hang out and become friends. Um, when I was out in LA, you know, a few times. So I've known Jesse for, you know, over a year now and, um, he's just gotten more and more awesome. So, but, really but he's, but so, but I know, I know, you, I know you get mad at me when I do that. <laughs> So, but I didn't realize like how accomplished he was and, and he's going to listen. I hope he listens to this. If I mean, he might be the guy who's like, I'm, I'm going to drive three hours and not list and not hear any of the fruit of that labor. Um, it's a whirlwind <laughs> and it, 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 podcast. And <laughs> it was, you said in the podcast that he was like the Tasmanian devil coming in and he is like, he's yeah. like, <laughs> but so, he makes you think. So we're recording the intro after the podcast yes. and Jesse was... <laughs> I don't, I, I don't know. It's, it's one of those ones where, where it's like, like you really feel like at the, like you have these preconceptions, you have, you know, what you think is what you think. And then by the end of it, you're like, I was wrong about everything. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. But I was right. Cause yeah, but you were, yeah, but you were, you were definitely right. Um, <laughs> uh, for for everybody else out there, realize that Jesse says whatever he wants to, and God bless him for doing that. Mm-hmm. Um, you gotta love him for it. He's he's the he's he's definitely one of these sweeter, more uh, animated, incredible. I hope he stays friends with me and doesn't hate me. (laughs) No, but Um, it's just more of a reason for you to watch the video of the podcast too. I know you can get it subscribing on iTunes and listen to it in the car, but this is one of the, the rare ones. I think that you would benefit even more. Yeah. And even though, yeah. And even though it's one angle, like a play, um, I, I, it, it, it works. And I think you need to watch it because I think the surprising thing to Stacy was how much I didn't talk. I don't, yeah. And, 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 and my facial expressions apparently were interesting. They were incredible. <laughs> they were priceless. And I was, I didn't talk because I was watching you and I just love listening to Jesse. I didn't realize I was making faces. <laughs> no, but they were good. Cause you're just like, like, I've never seen you like so engaged, engaged and like, but you were listening and you're like thinking about it and your jaw was dropping. Cause you're like, Oh shit. Like <laughs> I was, he's right. Like, Holy crap. <laughs> you know, it was just kind of cool. Cause I've never seen you in that. It, for that long so, of capacity. So, so needless to say, Jesse has expanded my mind. And uh, for, for one of the first times ever, I have shut up. <laughs> um, as as my friend Lee Perez in Los Angeles uh, says when I visited him last time, about a half hour hanging out with him, he goes, man, you learned how to talk a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but not on this one. And I was like, you oh. You learned to listen a lot on I this I said, one. Lee, I've learned, though. <laughs> um, Lee, if you're listening, I love you. So without further ado... Let's start the intro. So, 
screw the intro. Yeah. <laughs> he is the intro. Yeah, something. We're here. Yeah, and something just gonna happened. going to be fucking awesome. <laughs> something just happened. Um, Like from, from like the heavens above. So we're, Stacey and I are sitting here with Jesse Snyder, who... Jesse Blaze Snyder. He's the coolest middle name in the world. So legal, <laughs> legal name. Wait, that's on the birth certificate. I hate when it's in fucking quotes. It makes me mental. Why? Oh, because they I'm treat just you like, like you're making people think I named myself that. <laughs> and I Is used that to, what they do. It's so funny. I yes, yeah, so, uh, everybody pretty much puts it in quotes. And I used to think that. Um, well, I used to not. I, I wasn't a pot smoker. I was straight edge until I was like 28. And um, uh, but uh, I. I was, it was recommended to me, uh, actually by my drummer, uh, Crystalline, right before he passed away. Uh, like literally he and I had like a road trip. Uh, if we were together in our band for two years and like, we were going to take on the world, planned everything, what we were going to do, uh, you know, be rock stars and, you know, get married to our girls that we loved. And, uh, and I was like three days away from asking my wife to be my, be my wife. And, uh, he became my best friend. And then he died like two hours later. But right before he did, he... Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. But right before he did, he convinced <laughs> me to try brownies. He was like, we're going to have... You should come down and have brownies. I think it would be good for you. And then what happened was years went by because I was like past the certain age where like people offer you marijuana oh. <laughs> yeah, or yeah, whatever. And I had already told all right. my friends, everybody close to me, no, I was yeah. pretty much, they pretty yeah. much did that See on this the side. X on my hand. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, means something. yeah. And I mean, I wasn't like a dick about it, but everybody just, they just don't even discuss it with you. They just right. keep you outside of that. So years went by. And then my brothers, uh, who are five and seven years younger than me, uh, Cody Blue Snyder, who's, uh, brilliant director, uh, and uh, Shane Snyder, Shane Royal Snyder, another great I name. I told you the names um, are amazing. <laughs> middle name. uh, not cool. It's Stacy. Your middle not name cool is not cool. <laughs> Pretty much. Oh, <laughs> compared Stacey, to his Stacey, family, yeah. yes, Stacy, not cool toy. That's I know. <laughs> we've been taught to be cool. We we do have cool you practices. You were born cool because of the middle names. We, yes, we do. I'm Suzette all my. Suzette did a good job. <laughs> yeah, well, I, uh, my kids have fucking cool. They middle do. Names his too. Co- his kids have really cool. I've names. I've carried on the tradition. So wait, no wait, wait. So. Wait, I know a lot just happened. <laughs> yeah, as I'm trying to like <laughs> type shit. Um, so wait, what's your third brother's middle name? Uh, Royal. Royal. Mm-hmm. Okay, so now you have you have four kids. Uh, I have four, and and then I have a sister, Cheyenne Jean Snyder. See, that seems a little reversed. Cheyenne. Yeah. Well, it's a uh, we're we're cowboys, and she's an Indian. <laughs> Is that- <laughs> Is that what your dad thought? <laughs> <laughs> and and Jean is uh, my grandmother, who uh, oh, is, is like our kind of family guardian angel. So the the matriarch, yeah, gets the we, respect we, that she we, deserves. We lost her, and it was I mean it was a real big blow to the family and big blow to my mom. I was you know her best friend. So uh, so when you know I. I she had already been named that. I don't know, uh, but years a couple years earlier, I think Cheyenne, Cheyenne did get to meet grandma for like a couple years so what's 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 your mom's heritage um italian irish oh my god so family gatherings oh yeah yeah interesting <laughs> oh but my largely well, but that's italian, my family too the i the, the largely italian yeah but it's split it, you know what it, it was it never the italians really can eat well the was, irish can it, drink it well. was never really that because they don't come together they just they have separate things. They live like these. Yeah, well, the Irish ones didn't have anything, and the and the Italian ones had big feasts that they didn't invite most of the. It was like Greece and Rome. It was just too. like they're yeah, just more, like nah. more, more separate. I never yeah. saw a lot of mix of them. Yeah, we'll eat lots of to- we'll eat lots of greens. You guys eat the tomatoes. We'll stay over here and yeah. we'll be good. No, I think the uh, the Macintosh sisters they all went to Florida. You know, and, and divorced all their husbands from New York. And well, of all course, New, and so all the New York brothers and you know, they're, and in they're all they're all still together, and all the Irish ones are still. So, together. what's your mom's maiden name? Gargiulo. No Whoa. way! Yeah. No way! <laughs> the person who actually co-owns this studio. If I want to, I can talk like I'm from Long Island. Uh, like Gargiulo, water, Suzette, water, some coffee. Yeah. Hey, how's it going? I'm Jesse Blaze Snyder. My dad's D Snyder from Twisted Sister. Twi- you never heard of Wait, them? Can Twisted you say Twisted Sister? Twisted Sister. Twisted Sister. I think it's a Twisted Scissor. Twisted Sister. Like I don't remember them. Twi- um, Twisted Sister. <laughs> What the fuck are we going to talk how? So, all right, now wait a second. So where did you grow up then? I grew up on Long Island. 
Now, th- I've been on that. That's a long island. <laughs> I don't mean that like, I didn't mean it as a joke. It, it, it is seems long, like it is a fucking Long Island. I just drove from a portion of that Long Island. To I get can't here. believe you did that, man. Four Thank hours. you. You're welcome. Um, With your fucking Sesame Street sweatshirt on, which I well, love. Well, you know what? Um, Stacy All the favorites. was trying to do something cool, and uh, <laughs> she was coming, bringing me out here to do some things a little while back, and then she ended up having to cancel, but she ended up still like paying for the cool thing that she did, but not really, really getting anything out of it or whatever. <laughs> what did you do? No, she was just like friends. paying for yes. paying for the flight so that we could do two things at once, but oh, then we had to cancel, and then I felt bad, like oh well, I didn't get to help you out. Do not now. feel that. So bad. I'm helping now. <laughs> You're, I'm, so I've helped. He's here now. And this that's is my all help. That matters. See, but this isn't, drive, this isn't a favor. This is a memory. <laughs> it, not, will be. Yeah, it, it will be. Yeah, it will be. Yeah, it will be it already. Yeah, immortalized in digital time. True. Um, so what? Wait. So for anybody that doesn't know, and 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 look, we live in this northeastern Pennsylvania. Your your dad, in a in a weird way, like was formidable in my childhood, but not for music. Oh yeah, oh PMRC. And when he fought against that's Tipper the most Gore. important thing for, about him that for me, you know that that was not only was that now can you do you remember that time? Yeah, what I, was that like eighty seven? Yeah, I remember it very clearly. That was my birthday when the day of the thing was with trial. The day with my, the, with the day that he spoke. wasn't there for my birthday. For, I mean, but that was fine. I'm very proud of him. That was more important. That was way more important than my birthday, and um, I'm glad he did that. And um, <clears throat> the. Uh, my father has been lumped in with all these shitty 80s hair metal bands <laughs> who have vapid, non-existent messages in their music and do nothing for the brain or the heart or the soul. It's been me, me, me. Yeah. yeah. Twisted Sister was a band for you, and he was writing songs to empower you, and there are a lot of people who appreciate that, and uh, that is what has held him up as a rock star, and so many people shit talk him. No, it's because he's a freedom fighter, and he proved it, backed it up like a fucking motherfucker when he went down to the damn Senate, pulled out his piece of paper, and said, shut the fuck up, assholes. He was like the crumpled up book report he pulled out. I'm an artist. This is the way I've chosen to be an artist. This does not mean I am not smart. And the the arguments well, against... Well, it's like the cliched, like, oh, you're blonde, you're dumb. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I was so proud of him. I'd still remain that is like crowning achievement. But I think he's a brilliant musician as well. And he's not regarded over here because he's regarded as a one-hit wonder, which is stupid. It's he's, not. He's over here. He's a double mega-hit wonder with a hit ballad, Kicker. And over in Europe, they have the previous album, You Can't Stop Rock and Roll, where they had multiple t- hit singles off it for I Am I Me and You Can't Stop Rock and Roll, which is my favorite song of all time. Well, most of that, most music is, gets successful not here. Mm-hmm. So I mean, that's people, what the world doesn't realize, people, or at least the Ameri- United change States change them like they're not worthy, <laughs> and they are so worthy. And my father is so damn brilliant and consistent. And if you go, you can go back to this to his early stuff, and he just gets better and better and better if you follow through. Things he did after Twisted Sister out of necessity. The last freaking Twisted Sister record, which wasn't supposed to be a Twisted Sister record, was a D. Snyder solo album originally. That thing is fucking unbelievable. If you have not listened to Love is for Suckers, and if you remotely like poppy rock music with fucking balls, you will love it. It is so damn good. And then he just did little project after little project that was fucking bonkers great in its own way. And he, he's he been kind of just like, they, he got turned into a clown at some point. like in. But do you think depiction. that situation... Like around that time? It wasn't appreciated. It wasn't appreciated. Everybody like kind of like turned away from it. He was the only one. Frank Zappa and John Denver, and they were like, they were already considered respectable. And he was considered an asshole. And nobody really, it didn't really come out what he did and how he did it until much later. Yeah. And most of the people at the time couldn't appreciate it. And largely all the parents took from it is, um, this guy's bad. Well, that's, I mean, they were blaming everything exactly. on music back they, then. They were saying, well, you can go to the Motley Crue concert, but not the Twisted Sister concert. And literally, this was being told to my dad. So this is what's being echoed across the land as, as the perception became that he is representing the filthy 15. 
it, it's it's just well, let's, it let's, was also still and at the same time they also became a little <laughs> bit of a cartoon because of the nature of the videos they were comedic um younger kids were getting into it was like their tongue music. in cheek it was yeah it yeah. was and it but it was it was smartly tongue, tongue in cheek and a lot of their stuff was but uh, kids were coming down to the show so all the aesthetic was it was it became uncool to me and, and to twisted sister and but it's really like it's bullshit and uh my dad's just he's fucking incredible he's he's my favorite i mean let's let's well let's next get to rage against the machine that's my that's my big <laughs> well morello my big is, favorite band there's well, about four or five guitar players the moment you hear him play you're like that's tom morello you know it's funny i don't particularly like tom morello's style of playing what i do like is those four guys in perfect balance being dynamic constantly giving space to each instrument not being egotistic and trying to cover up this guy giving that guy space giving that guy space and then coming together to just hammer home the point of the song repetition of the thing he wants you to fucking hear and meaningful lyrics whether you agreed with him or not where, where did where did where did wait where did you i would have never expected you to be the guy who had like the severe affinity for rage they are the best band i'm not disagreeing there's no ego there's no ego in that band and there are other well, was that the guy that they thought had there an are ego? other people who have done it in other genres but they are so unique and i think what they've captured is just the rhythm of music and you can do what they did with any kind of music is the great thing. And I've been trying to really bring that, just that, that really solid rhythm where the instruments are in harmony and they're not tripping over each other's dicks uh, because that, that just always seems to be what happens. And also everybody tries to get so overly artistic in oh, they shoot themselves okay, good, in the explain foot. To they me, they explain don't want to like, they don't want to like, <clears throat> you gotta hone in on the feeling. What do you think's the problem with music today? It's it's soulless because they're getting these kids so young, right? Because of the internet, and then <laughs> they don't love them. They they just try to give them songs, and it doesn't work. Y it's just like oh, if I put a dollar in this machine, I'll get three dollars back. Yeah, right. You, if you want a, something to succeed, it's got to succeed because you love it, and you literally need to go out and find something that you love and go, oh wow. I could help that be great. And when you are the artist, right? you can't see the forest for the trees. It took me so long to like become an artist. I mean, I would say like now I know who I am. I'm not worried about it. I've figured it out. It's not. You know, it's not a question. But for so long, I just, I don't, I don't know. We don't, Are you who, trying to fit into somebody am, else's mold yeah, or who, what? No, just like, but like, who, who am I? I don't, I don't know. You know, like, I didn't, I didn't want to be something. I don't like having a body. I don't like this. I don't like being judged by this. I don't like being judged that I'm a man. I don't like being judged that I'm white. I don't like being judged that I have long hair, short hair, tattoos. I mean, I tend to lean into that because if you're going to judge me, I want to know it. If you're going to be looking at me with that shit, right. I want to fucking know right now because I'm getting you the fuck out of here. Right, you're gone. You're, bad. you're gone. Right. Anybody else, you can stay. <clears throat> you know, so I just didn't want to apply any of these things that I knew had all this built-in meaning that was so stupid and it had nothing to do with anything. You know, like, I just like, I like the big wrestlers, you know, the rock stars. Right. You know, the people who inspired me, the superheroes. And I just wanted to be like that, but I didn't want to be arrogant. So you didn't want to call yourself Superman. <laughs> It's funny. I don't know why it's like, why it like, is it making me feel emotional talking about it? It's crazy. About, about, about like why you did. I don't even understand. <laughs> well, what was, what was the, do you remember where you found the moment where you're like, I'm me now. I feel comfortable now. I, you know what? Maybe I'm happy. Maybe I'm crying because I'm happy. Well, that's a good thing, right? It's a good thing. That I don't feel like that anymore. Do you, so. do you think that young people go through that? Yeah. We should, I can't believe that. It's me. okay. Yeah. I'm so surprised that this is making me cry. I don't think I've like cried this hard in a minute. <laughs> take, dude, take your time. This is awesome. Don't you think? I mean, we'll edit this out if that's okay with you. 
No, Unless you want right. me to keep it. No, it's okay. It's what's meant to be. Um, why, why is that? But why is that so powerful for you in retrospect, looking at it where you are today? It was terrible. You know, I think people think that who they are is just going to find them or something. Like I don't look. As long as if I don't look, eventually it'll happen. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not exactly like that. And I think we're presented with all these people that have such clear-cut identities. And life isn't exactly like that. And it makes you a little crazy. Yeah. Because you don't know who you are. Um, and it really sucked. You know, I think that's like a good part of a depression that I went through for a little while. Was that like early twenties? Mid twenties? Well, I no, no, it was after I did this show rock the cradle and I lost, uh, I came in second. Um, wait, that's the one state you were showing me today. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I kicked some ass on that show. He I just, did. and it I deserve to win. I absolutely deserve to win. And I'm not being arrogant. Go back, watch every single episode of that show and tell me, I did not deserve to win. I no, you it. did. I fucking dare you. It was a real shock to my system at the time that I lost. And I don't know exactly what happened. I think that they may have just changed the results because having Jive Records get a rock star right. didn't make any fucking sense. They didn't have any rock people. And he was the closest thing to anything on they the did, show. They, they did like SWV. It was, yeah, it was supposed to be a record yeah. deal with them. So I think they were just like, I don't know, Crosby. Because nothing happened with his record either. No offense to Crosby. Crosby's an excellent musician. Crosby's just like me. He's somebody who was active and playing, you know, with bands and, 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 Freaking, you know, he and I had experience, and that's why we were able to do well on the show. But they pit me against this guy, and they made him look like a good guy for the whole show, and made me look like a bad guy. And um, and then I mean, did they edit it in a way where oh yeah, where they yeah. made a villain? Oh yeah, they they literally wouldn't let me do a charity thing, and they told us because oh, Ch uh, Cat Crosby's doing a charity thing this week. What? And we went like, why can't we both do it? Yeah, is because it the it same charity. It didn't fit the narrative that they were playing. I would literally, I would watch these things, and so like, so funny. like, how far, how far after you shoot it do you see the edit? I'm verbose and a little naive, so I would sit in these um, interviews, right, and I would be honest, and I would talk and answer any questions they had, and they would keep me there. Oftentimes, until I said... The thing they wanted you to say. Oh, yeah. And they would literally say... Say this. Can you say, I felt like Crosby was a dick because... Uh, this is an exaggeration. Are you shitting me? I never said that. And then I can be like, well, I guess so. Like, And I would just sort of like go along with that. And then I would see the cut. And I would literally be like... Oh! 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 I said the thing and then they cut. <gasps> you, were, you call, were you like calling him up or texting him going they, like, dude, I never fucking said that. They were cutting me so fucking fast. And they would literally like, because I would be like, they would have me talking shit about people. And I was never like happy about it. Right. I really liked my castmates. Right. But I was being honest. I yeah. assumed that everybody else was like doing the same thing. But do you think that comes from like you're, you're playing football? Like we in honest, that in that environment where you're like you know, you're missing him. your block you're yeah I don't yeah. know I was uh, for me it was just and like then you get off the field and you're still well, friends like Akiba like she she was uh, MC Hammer's uh, daughter and she was my first like friend out there when I came out there and I, I loved her she was super sweet and she had such a beautiful voice gospel voice and she just didn't have a lot of experience right and she went out there and. Um, she got really nervous and, you know, she didn't sound so great. And that's basically what I said. I went like, oh, you know, Akiba, you know, uh, she didn't sound so great. Um, she And then she didn't sound so great. Akiba, she didn't sound so great. Like it was ridiculous. I mean, and I mean, I became and then and then even like, are you seeing this week by week getting pissed off, though? I saw it week by week. And then my friend even inadvertently got involved. She was bitching at me because she didn't like that. I was trying to help the other cast members. Like I was always like I was always like, 
you know what you should do? You should like, fucking, that would be awesome. People would dig that, you know, whatever. And she would be like, will you stop helping me? And then she Because they're something. making you be the villain. Well, yeah. And then she said something to me in front of the cameras that was like, well, not everybody wants your help. And then they used that to make it seem like I was arrogant. And I, and <laughs> and literally my dad at some point, like when they cut to him in the thing, he's like, I don't know what the hell they're doing with these video packages every week. That ain't my kid. <laughs> this is my kid. Because the only thing we could control was the line. Live show. I could control the live show, and I would literally tell them I was going to do one thing and do something else, because I, because I knew they would they would screw it up. And I I mean and, and I put on a fucking show and a half. But did you think um, that be, because you were like these guys are trying to fucking them. control? It was who it was I am. It's the the producer, the head producer, David Goffin. You dick. Um, <laughs> he just kicked me around and used me as a fucking wait. What, Geffen what, Records, what? David Geffen. No, David Goffin. He's oh a Goffin, big reality show producer. He's He's a douchey poosh. He's just one of those those guys who just talks to you one thing and fucking does another thing. And just, it was just constantly, constantly. And I had a great relationship with all the crew and everything. I mean, because I work on sets and, you know, like my brother's a director, you know, I'm I'm an award winning assistant producer. Um, You know, uh, I'm, uh, I've worked a lot, you know, behind the scenes. So, you know, I'm, you, anybody in this industry is just my friend. You know, I assume you know, would probably like the same movies and into comic books, whatever else, you know, like maybe I can make some friends. I'm, I'm a friendly person. And uh, <laughs> oh, they just like just chewed me up and spit me out. And we were so devastated. I, I, I don't remember how long it was. It was at least, I don't know, five to, to 10 minutes of dead silence in my dressing room full of 26 people. My family, my friends, everybody was so certain they came out to see it happen. Right. And then we just sat there like, what the fuck just happened? So you, so we, is, is, okay, so like. The first I'm, half of the show, mind you, is judging. They, you, you know, like all the Second people episode. are calling in, you know, right. like they're calling in they're They're, they're like calling you in. I got the untouchable seat three weeks in a row, two weeks in a row. Um, and I tried to not, I tried to give it up because I wanted people to vote for me. I didn't want to be there if I wasn't being voted for mm-hmm. and they wouldn't let me do that. And, and, and the two or three other weeks, um, you know, I was in the, you know, top in two or whatever, yeah, in the top, whatever. Uh, and, uh, you know, all the way down to the, uh, down to the wire and down to me and Crosby and there I went. It was it was weird, uh, but um. Uh, but what do you like? From what, that, like I was really kind of like depressed, and like, I, 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 I think I had like a little bit of an identity crisis to a certain degree. I mean, I didn't know what I was going to do with myself. I didn't know what I was going to do. I didn't know what I was going to do. Did wrong. I also had a like a moral victory party with baptized by fire. And, um, all these people who came down who were really interested in me were immediately not interested in me. And I mean, I know now what it was and it was that they were, they saw me as like a possible Bon Jovi. Yeah. Swoon for the girls. Ladies love you. Look, yeah, you were my lips. favorite. He's, he's <laughs> Stacey's, you were always yeah. my favorite. <laughs> and and Stacy hasn't taken a breath in seven minutes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I was a snarling, angry punk rocker right liberty spikes at the whiskey a go-go back flipping cursing and fucking stirring shit i mean are they dressing you they're like this is what you're gonna wear this week no no this no no gonna... i fucking did yeah, everything your mom I fucking, did, right your mom helped you yeah me and, me and my mom put put together the whole thing right but, i mean we framed everything. i'm just trying to figure out like how much control i had control with the music so like we did like a pull the other one where i pretended that my uh, parents didn't know that i was doing like an acoustic right, right. I, I told no no i told them i was doing an acoustic um and then i kicked it into a rock and roll song I ripped off my shirt and like right. you know did something fucked Crosby uh, no, no offense Crosby smash the guitar that's no, what you did no you offense Crosby Crosby and I became friends but I mean it was, it was it became such a weird thing because they were they were making it that you know they kept making it like that on the show it's like oh so uh, anger inducing <laughs> but anyway when i'm ptsd over this no, I, I feel no. bad i'm like no no not at all Th- this this a warm uh, towel and a background no I, I don't really give two, <laughs> two shits about this anymore but i mean but it is really the part of of what set me into like a, a little bit of a depression because i didn't know what to do because it was just sort of like a middling reaction to my band and my music and i was just like 
I don't know how to respond to that. You know, everybody said it sucked. But it seems like it was, you were like, set up, though. Them. I, well, no, no, no. Afterwards, when I had, like, the opportunities right. to come along, the opportunities didn't want to sign my band. So I was like, what's going on? But everybody came looking for a certain something, and I gave them the complete opposite of what they wanted. They wanted cute Jesse that could be sold to teenagers, and he's like a little rock doll, and he can be anything. Yay! I did that to prove that I can do fucking anything, not so I could show that I'm like a little fucking Madonna doll, and I'm gonna dress up for everybody. So, like, it, but, but I, mean, I did wasn't the it, right thing that they were looking for. So, everybody was still interested in me. They liked me, but they didn't know what to do with me now. They had one idea, and they were like nah. and then everything just kind of fizzled and then i was like i don't know what to do do i keep doing this thing that i got like a middle and eh, i mean do you go on? like it's over should i go to plumbing well no I, well i did for a second and then everybody who loved everybody who knew and loved me begged me not to which was funny because i had previously told everybody i was going to quit a couple of years earlier and did rock the cradle Literally the day I decided I was going to quit, got called, rocked the cradle, and I was like, well, that's weird, uh, you know, kind of thing. And I did rock the cradle, and then after rock the cradle and I was feeling like weird and depressed, whatever, I went like, you know, I think I'm done. And then everybody went, no, what? No. You know, I mean, I just proved. Son of Odin? Yes, exactly. <laughs> they, they, they just went, you just proved what you can do on that fucking stage. And like, because they knew I felt like shit because it was just cover songs. I'm a songwriter. Right. You know, I'm a... I've learned to be a great performer because my dad's a great performer. Really, I've, I've just watched him. He's fucking incredible, um, you know. And I picked up a lot of a lot of things. But you know, I'm a songwriter first, and I never got to perform my original. And I was supposed to perform my song Juggernaut on um, the end of Rock the Cradle if I won, and I really? didn't win. Yeah, it was it was our only chance to do an original song was if we won. It was ridiculous. My only chance to show you what I really am is if I win. Are you fucking kidding me? It was it was the most ridiculous thing. And um and I never got to play it and that like broke my heart. Even though Juggernaut has lived on in uh Adam Green and Joe Lynch's Movie Crypt podcast. It's a theme song for the Movie Crypt um Juggernaut, which is cool. So cuz now people know that song and they really other people have gotten into Baptized by Fire. Baptized by Fire is a fucking great band. It doesn't matter that these guys didn't get it. I I was too I was too punk rock and dirty Sid Vicious or whatever else for them. I was, I'm fucking cool, man. Fuck that shit. I'm not a pussy. <laughs> I'm not fucking, I, I'm not out here to freaking like tuck my dick between my legs and do whatever anybody tells me. I'm an artist and I'm doing what I want to do, you know, and it's not a fucking thing where I'm like, I'm not willing to work with people and cooperate and whatnot. But unfortunately, most of these situations aren't really like that. They want you to be a certain thing. And if you're not that thing and they don't think they can get that thing from you, well, they're going to be good. I mean, do you have like, I do you have like a rat? Like a? Are you like on the like the do not hire list? Are you on like oh, the no. do not call? Oh no, I fucking work like crazy. So what? Ha so what happened? How many? You said it was like five years after that where you're finally like. I'm a professional voiceover actor, professional comic book writer, professional uh, vocalist, songwriter, producer. Um, you know, and other crap. But I mean, I were written for Marvel Comics, DC Comics, Image Comics, uh, Dynamite, Boom Studios, Disney, Pixar, uh, Muppets. Um, All right, let, wait, wait, wait. Yeah, this is what, no, I, and we don't have to, but I'm, this is what I'm saying. I it, learned like, how to not tie yeah. my shoes, bunny ears. I, I, I speak <laughs> my P's because fuck these people. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if some asshole exists somewhere. They can't stop you from being, if you're, if you're not an asshole like they are, <laughs> they're are always people who are going to love and reward the fact that you're a wonderful person and they enjoy working with you. So I get the benefit of being able to work with like well, I'm hope, companies I'm, I, for like, ages. I was the voice of Pizza Hut for two and a half years. I was the voice of Kia Motors for like three and a half, maybe four years. Uh, voice of Cheetos, voice of GameStop for three years, voice of once on Broadway for like six years. I'm the voiceover God in my age group. It's like ridiculous. I'm only 35 and I have, I do every level. I'm the narrator. I've narrated for Smithsonian channel. I narrate a week, a twice weekly show for travel channel called food paradise, um, which I'm twice weekly in the booth doing four hours of food paradise to, you know, to cover. Um, I've done video games and I've done a final fantasy call of duty. Uh, I've done, 
uh, animation. I'm up for a lead in a Disney XD pilot, which I don't know if it's ever going to go anywhere. The dudes of Legend County or something like that. We'll see if that ever the happens. The dudes. That's, Dude. I mean, but it's like like two years now, but every time I they reach out, it's like, no, it's still, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, I mean, that happens with these things. They're just like, meh. Well, we like, so, so like I, so I, like I got sober in, in, in 2010 from like booze and all the other bad stuff. And from then, like, I felt like I wasted my twenties. So I needed to like help people. Mm-hmm. So like I speak to, like, I go up to like high schools and speak to them. And basically my, my message is like, just don't be an asshole. And That's but the there's like poetry thing. groups that, that I, ooh, I support ooh, and I, all this stuff. But, I, but in okay. case these kids are listening, in ooh. case any of them are listening, can I? Oh yes. Like can I, can we can tell I them give like you about my the bullshit piece of advice? Yeah, that, fuck that I yeah. give everybody. Yeah, this is really the best the best piece of advice I can give you. Okay. Follow up, follow up, follow up, and just keep following up with a big smile. And a please and a thank you. They will become so guilty <laughs> for not getting back to this kind, wonderful person who keeps emailing them that even if you were a complete fucking douchebag in your actual in person meeting of them, you will have completely changed their vision of you through repetition and email of kindness and smiley faces and thank yous. If you want to work, don't fucking give up. Just keep going after whoever the fuck you get on the hook, whether it's an editor or a producer or whoever it is. If they say, hey, I'll help you. Here's my email. Hit me up. Just keep going. Don't get angry. Don't get your ego involved. I spent two and a half fucking years reaching out to Bill Beretta through friends. Bill Brett is the puppet captain of the Muppets. I'm a huge Muppet fan and I've been desperately oh, well, trying then, now that you to said write. that. Yeah, I've been desperately trying to write for them. And um <laughs> and two and a half years, only to finally get moved over to another person after the two and a half years, and another two and a half years before I actually sat down to lunch with Bill Beretta. <laughs> and he got to hear about how much I fucking love the Muppets. <laughs> <laughs> and what I thought needed to happen so that they could be great again. <laughs> and, uh, and was and Bill like, I'm feeling sad today. What's that Snyder kid up to? Maybe I can go have lunch with him. Bill was awesome. <laughs> and the, well, basically the people that I got to go after him, I cornered them at parties. They heard what I had to say and they said, you need to talk to Bill. So what happened from that? What was that? Well, what was that meeting well, like? Because you tried for what it, six years? It was great. It, it was great initially. Basically, Bill was like, "I, I agree." You know, like I agree with you. And uh, we're doing a new show, and uh, that's hush hush. You can't say anything. Um, and we just we got a head writer who's like the head writer of Modern Family. Boom again. Can't keep this quiet. But uh, you know, and uh, he's gonna be the showrunner or whatever. But I'm going to try to get you in the writer's room. If not the first season, we'll you know definitely get you in the second. Follow-ups, 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 follow-ups. But alas, uh, Mr. Showrunner brought in all his own people. Nobody who loved the Muppets. I mean, there's some people, I'm sure, who love the Muppets on some level, but not like me. Not the somebody who understands why they fundamentally work. The people who are fanboys of this. Does that piss you off? It pisses me off because there is something. The Muppets, Deadpool. Like across genres. Do you know Deadpool? I'm aware. The foundational Deadpool uh, thing. Uh, The reason why Deadpool works is he's a fucking Muppet. He's a live action Muppet. He wants to be a good guy, but he's a fuck up. And just no matter what he does, he kind of fucks up even though he can do a lot of things really good but he still always fucks up the things and in the in the movie they make him a little bit less of a fuck up he gets the girl he's whatever but in general in the comics he's always been the fuck up and um and i'm a i'm a comic geek so i mean you know that's my thing and i you have to love what's there what and not that you have to love it but there are certain things that are there that are fucking phenomenal right and once they're introduced it, it behooves you to utilize them and the thing about the muppets that w- i don't think everybody realizes but they are us beyond our worst 
We can certainly do better than that pig. If she can be a model, I can be a model. If Piggy can be an actress, I can be an actress. If Kermit can run a fucking variety show, if a frog can run a variety show, then I can run a variety show. It's a fucking frog. I'm a human. You know, that is the basic tenet of everything. If Gonzo can go out there and fucking explode cannons and do weird art and stretch his body and be bizarre, you know, it's all just, hey, go Go out there and be who you're meant to be. Forget about the two old men. The two old men who don't fucking get it. Forget about those Up in the two mezzanine, old, yeah. It's brilliant, man. Forget about the old men who don't get it. Fucking do what you want to do. Be I didn't realize there was so much subtext to the Muppets. That is, that is the underpinnings of every character. Is the Muppets. They're awful. They're awful at what they do. Swedish chef can't fucking cook. <laughs> It's true. Fozzie Bear is a terrible comedian. Gonzo makes art that nobody wants to see and is very dangerous. <laughs> Kermit is a frog running a variety show. <laughs> Piggy wants to be a model. She's not a model. She's a pig. She's the literal <laughs> definition of the slang term that people have used to describe unappealing women. <laughs> That's why they called her Miss Piggy. Is this what you said at your meeting? Essentially. <laughs> I essentially. <laughs> this is the best podcast I've wait, ever wait, wait, been wait. a part of so in my life. So essentially, <laughs> so maybe that's why the follow up. You know, there are some characters in it that that go against that grain, but not necessarily like you know, even the Electric Mayhem. They can get through a song, sure, but through Animal. They who can knows? never get through. Yeah, who knows what might happen? Woman! It's probably going to end early, right? right? You know. So I mean, again, just everybody is just you know. <laughs> Playing against their ability, but, but also in a weird way, they're all family. They all care about each other. Oh yeah, it's well, like the island well, of mis. It's they, like us. They're it's us. the misfit toys. They are <laughs> allowing. They're giving each other the space to be whoever the hell they want to be. That's it. That's My what. Mind the, is it, blown and right now. and it's such a good. <laughs> it, it it is it is so important for that message to be in the marketplace, to be in, of ideas. Um, and it's not from the previous incarnations of the Muppets. They're just missing it because they made the Muppets famous. That's the problem. The Muppets always must struggle. Once Miss Piggy succeeds, oh, Where you fuck go? that bitch. She's a bitch. <laughs> she doesn't deserve it. She's so awful. She's an awful person. She's yeah, bad. She doesn't deserve a talk show. I'm like, ugh, <laughs> screw this lady. She should be canceled. All right, so you might that be- That should the, have been the second season of their damn TV show. You, Miss Piggy's canceled. Yes. You might be the ultimate fanboy for the Muppets that I've ever met. And I grew up on like Fraggle Rock, but- is it okay that I like Muppets from Space? That's the best one. Okay, thank God. Oh, I love that one. No, actually, I couldn't say this best one. I would say Muppet Treasure Island is also a huge one. I've for never me. seen Muppet Treasure I enjoy, Island. I really enjoy the slightly dark spin that uh, Brian Henson brought to the franchise when he came in with. Um, uh, Chris, Muppet Christmas Carol and it was just a little you know they had the actor you know, right. the, the main actor but they started doing like these you know uh, old timey tales and then the Tim Curry but I really like it and the music in both those movies is great really? yeah I, I really like uh, Muppet Christmas Carol and Muppet Treasure oh, Island Muppet, Christmas Carol's Muppet Treasure Island has one of the funniest songs ever called Cabin Fever which is also on top of <laughs> on top of which includes one of the funniest jokes of Muppet Treasure Island. Don't tell I didn't see it. Oh, no, no. Well, I'm just, it's, it's right. a little spoiled, but you'll laugh now. It's like, <laughs> is that Rizzo sells tickets to the pirate ship as if it's a cruise ship <laughs> and is running a cruise ship aboard the pirate ship the whole time. And like, there's often times. Oh, wait, while they're out, Rizzo's yeah. running a cruise? So they'll like pan, <laughs> they'll pan over to like, like some violence will be going on and they'll pan over and they'll be like a little table and chairs with a bunch of different rats <laughs> and they're sitting down and they're eating a lovely meal and they and, and one turns to the other and goes these floor shows are amazing <laughs> like, they're on a real pirate ship <laughs> i need to watch muppet yeah. treasure island it's now. really good it's one of my favorites i love i, I loved love muppets it. from space i made my fiance watch it. it's She's so much like, fun oh, I, I like i like that one a lot you know i mean jacuzzi in general you know like the when the when the characters are depicted as themselves, uh, not famous, 
the famous thing really gets in the way because they're not famous in any of those movies. They get to be characters, but they get to be their weird selves. That's right. good because they get to fill a little little gap. They get to be uh, themselves in Muppets from Space and not famous. They're just living in a house. Kermit's, you know. Is that what happened with the show? Because I didn't watch the show because the show didn't look appealing to me. Um, No, no. Piggy had a TV show. It was like it was all wrong. It was all like, I so, mean, so, it, it, you know, and I, and when I say it's all wrong, um, I mean the fundamental underpinnings of what the premise of it all was. And I mean, there were certain things about it that were cool or whatever. And, oh, that's a good idea. And that would be fun to explore that. But we should explore that within a better um, subtext. Better for me would have been back in the theater trying to put on a show. You know, we got a movie out. Maybe people come to see us again. And they have uh, a special guest. Yeah, or whatever. And they can't sell tickets. And then do that. Do that Muppets TV show. That's a funny Muppets TV show. You can, you know, you can you can do all sorts of things with that. And they're struggling and they are our avatar. We can be them. We can be better than them because that's crazy. If they can do it, I can do it. I'll it be brave. like they're all in L.A. in condos. Exactly. 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 They're all famous Muppets now. It just doesn't work. All right. So you're like, you're. It's safe to say you're a nerd. Oh yeah. All right. So so why? So, and you might have that your finger on the pulse a little bit more than th- these two goons in here sitting with you. <laughs> why why do people with money hire people who don't know the source material to write? You know what I mean? You know, there's a lot of reasons. I mean, it's a loaded question, uh, but, um, you know, I think- I'm not trying to set you up. I'm just trying to say- But I think the executives at WB in particular, like, you know, this is one example. um, They are, I I don't know who it goes to ultimately, but I'm guessing ultimately it goes up to these old men right? um, who think Superman's passe- Right. Um, they tried Superman Reborn, uh, which the was Burn this one? like, no, it was the one. Oh, with the, with the Brian Singer. Yeah. Oh, wait, wait, I'm sorry. Voldemort. Yeah. The, <laughs> and, 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 and it didn't work. Okay. We tried the nice Superman. It didn't work. People didn't like it. We got to update him for the 20th century. Superman's got to be more like Batman. People like well, Christopher Batman. Christopher Nolan's Batman. Yeah. It's like yeah. people like Batman. Superman's got to be more like Batman. See, but that's a really, yeah, that's a really big problem though, because if you want to build a DC universe, right? <clears throat> there is a range of colors that you have to make sure stay separated. Right. They are the tones that keep the publications alive. They are different enough from each other that they're not stepping on each other's dicks. Right. If every character was Batman, they would all be canceled. Right. And there'd be one Batman book on the shelves. <clears throat> but right. the Flash carves out his own thing. No, you know, Batman's too whatever. This is a lighter book. It's Wally West. He's taken over from, you know, his, his uncle who died, but he wants to get it right and pass on the legacy. This is a different vibe here. Superman, he is the archetype, the far left of Batman. If he, The closer you put them together, then there's nothing in between. Everything gets lost in the wash and becomes a muddle because all your archetypes were based on Superman so there's and no Batman beauty, but there's sales. So, so there's new beauty of gray in the middle. Well, there isn't because Superman is the best-selling right book and other. Batman is the best-selling book. So everything else in the universe is literally based on being apart from the colors of Batman and Superman. Right. So the closer you bring Batman and Superman together, then there's no room in the middle for anything else. You start adjusting all these little things. Oh, no, you've made him too much like this character so now this is redundant this is redundant if you start changing too many of the basic tendons you dismantle so you hated batman versus what you were able to do i hate i didn't see it i hated justice no 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 no, wait i hated man of steel with a fucking passion well because it was Zack snyder's man of steel i I didn't cry, but I wanted to cry at the end of the fucking movie. I felt like um, the little kid from the Iron Giant. I was like, say it ain't so, Superman. (laughs) (laughs) Like, I was just like, you just like destroyed the whole city and you didn't care about anybody. I thought that was crazy. and, And you killed this guy? What the fuck is this movie I'm watching? 
I, it's, 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 I it's, wanted to see Superman. What the? Who the fuck is this? And the reason why the previous hopeful Superman hadn't worked was one because it was continuing for something that was really kind of old and a lot yeah, of. It was about a land deal. Yeah, it was about a land deal, and they were, and once again, no visually interesting villain for Superman to fight. They could have done Parasite, something cool. They could have done the Kryptonite Man. They could have done uh, fucking Doomsday, I see but Doomsday looking like he should look. Brainiac would even be yeah. interesting. You know, they could, because the, the, the ships, and there's so many cool design elements that you could pull from. And what do they fucking do? Lex Luthor and freaking crystals? Yeah. I was just like, eh. And Kumar. Yeah, we were, yeah, we were just, <laughs> it, it was it, it was a shitty movie. It wasn't a shitty idea to be make Superman hopeful. And it has been, uh, there's been dozens of Superman writers at this point who have written some sort of story, just set out to prove Superman is cool, and I'm going to show you why. And they've written a story and you will read it and I, if you know if you if I put it in front of you tomorrow like Joe Kelly wrote one called what's so funny about truth justice in the american way and it's e- these this group of extreme villains like all this would come up against superman and superman has to result to some extremes but he does not kill these guys he does stop them he finds a way and that is supposed to be what superman is that's supposed to be what batman is intellectually he finds a way well, he's through, a detective. Yes, and then also Superman through strength and courage and all this stuff, you know. But he's fighting things on a crazier scale usually than what Batman's dealing with. You know, actually physical, right. whatever. He's gonna find a way to do it the right way. And the moment you throw that out, like Batman's killing people and Superman's killing people, okay. Well, now you've basically erased any meaning from a character like Vigilante <clears throat> having a movie and all these other things. You've you've covered up. All the colors with this one ugly shade of everything. Do you think they should do a factory restart on that? I kind of do. I'm hoping maybe they'll do that with Flashpoint a little bit and, uh, you know, keep the Wonder Woman shit and, uh, and like, move forward. Um, I mean, I don't know. I'm hoping Aquaman will be be cool. I mean, I, I want this stuff to succeed, but Justice they League... They seem too similar. I now mean, that I'm looking funny. at it from I your perspective... I could have fixed Justice League. I, I mean, like, I've, I as like a writer, I watched that movie and I went like, any writer who loves this material could fix this movie. They just made a whole bunch of stupid choices. You know, things like not including Dark Side in some way, shape, or form. Uh, Steppenwolf's design... Oh God, it was ugly! It was terrible. Fuck. It looked like something out of uh, oh, God of War. Jesus <laughs> like, Christ! I mean, like it's like, well, we don't like this costume or this costume. Let's see if we can make something worse. Um, oh my God! If if you don't think you could do something better, just do exactly what's on the fucking page and try to make it as cool as possible. That's always the best thing to do. What do you think the best comic book movie ever made was? Um, oh, well, maybe Iron Man for me. With the that, first that, one? That was a real game changer. Because, you know, <clears throat> Iron Man did what a, a good movie should do. Bring something to the table for the comics. You know, Iron Man had never really had a great characterization in the comics. He was a little bit like, like alcoholic sobering, billionaire. alcoholic billionaire. Yeah, he, he, he didn't have that great lightness that that uh, that um, he brought to the role so I was really happy to see that you know because it just it added to it and it really did a wonderful job of just truncating some of the great basic tenets of Iron Man and doing them justice his freaking classic costume looked awesome his new costume looked awesome it satisfied me in all the right ways it was very much like a princess bride type movie you know just (laughs) just an enjoyable film and i was like this is great this brings my uh you know my child my inner child to life or whatever so that for me really uh was great and i guess it was good that incredible hulk sucked because you know probably lowered our expectations (laughs) 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 it's like oh norton no i wrote a killer hulk one shot for Marvel, which got collected into Savage Hulk volume two recently. Well, how did you get, I mean, how did you, how did you, how did you go from like football star to like, I was always a nerd of Palooza. I was always a writer. But get in there. You can be a football player and a, and a, and a nerd. Well, I think people think that you can't be. No, you totally could be. I was. Um, yeah, no, I, I like, I've been writing since I was a little kid. I mean, like before I could speak, I was writing songs and then I was writing, you know, lyrics. And then I would write like lyrics for like girlfriends and like poems and stuff like that. And then like, um, is that how you get your wife? Um, 
Yeah, to a certain degree. Actually, she said she was very <clears throat> impressed when she came down to a recital where I read a, a poem. Oh, wait. Really? I could recite it, I think. Really? Yes. <laughs> it's not like a 12-minute slam poem, is no. it? No. Okay. <laughs> Let's see. Now gather round and shed a tear for the ones who couldn't stay, or for the ones who lived in fear. Can you see the pattern there? It's hard for me, and I'm right here. The answer's clear, but you don't care, because fear blinds all, but you need not concern yourself with their welfare. Danger's hard for you to spot, depending on the circumstance. It's hard when you're just what you're not. You do the same old song and dance, so you can finish last in line, and hope your brown nose does enhance your standings in your master's mind. Holy shit. Woo. Are we supposed to? I always like that I one. think if someone does a poem. Like I think, no, no, no. I think if someone does a poem in front of you, you shouldn't clap. <laughs> it's like it, too loud. I think yeah, you should look loud. at them and, and just be like, thank That's you for awesome. the insight. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> thank no. you for allowing me to live in your mind for a moment. Yeah, thank you. I like that one. It's funny. I didn't remember the one that I had like won an award for. Like I had like had something that Wait, I Wait, so had, like, you said that one and she was like, uh, that's, so my, that's she, my boy. She was in the audience <laughs> and we were together for a few months. And I, I think I think she was, you know, she she... She thought that that, you know, the bra bravery or whatever on display on whatever level, putting yourself out there. I, I became a writer, you know, like a legit writer. I started writing, I, I wrote a short story that was in like the literary magazine and I used to write like features and like some stuff for the, like the newspaper. Um, and then, uh, I started taking this class uh, called Independent Writing for Publication, which was awesome. I'm so grateful for uh, Mrs. Krinsky. Um, I got to take it for two years. And literally everything I wrote was submitted to things. And we wrote like dozens and dozens of things. And it was lots of, lots of different things, papers and essays and uh, feature articles or, you know, news art, whatever it might be, poems, certain types of poems, right. haikus, whatever. And I was in all sorts of like magazines, newspapers. I was in news Newsday or Newsweek. What's the New York Long Island news newspaper? News News Long Island. I don't know. I told you it's a Long oh, Island. Teen <laughs> Teen Inc., which is their like you oh, know their like, fresh Teen voices, Incorporated fresh voices like you know not like so I I got like published to like a whole bunch of different places and then um I started trying to write a book and I, I like got like stuck on it. I was just I realized that I didn't read a lot of books. And I wasn't super into books. I mean, like I read books, but like yeah, but I don't read books. I either. didn't read like a lot of fiction. I, right. would, I would read more like information. Even the latest stuff. John Grisham thriller yeah. wasn't in your next to your toilet. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> I was like, but I did read comic books. So I didn't really know how. Well, how do you write comic books? But I was like, well, I'll better figure it out. So I started trying to figure it out, and I basically. You know, I, I actually, I submitted to the Marvel like submission thing and I got my rejection notice. Used to have that saved. I think it burned in the fire. Whatever. Good riddance. Fuck you. Um, and, uh, and then See, I, but along with the good memories, some ones that you might not be, need to be reminded of yeah. are gone to. Um, and I had some good, um, uh, I had a connection through wizard magazine to go to a, uh, uh, convention. And at the convention I met an editor who was a really nice guy, Mark Sumerak. And he gave me a whole bunch of notes on my Punisher pitch that I had put in and they were great notes and he really took the time. He's such a sweet guy. I love you, Mark. And, um, and I, uh, I rewrote something and actually next I got lucky. I was in the Marvel offices with Joe Casada and, um, my dad and, uh, we got a tour around Marvel, uh, after a whole thing that went down with like me realizing that Joe Casada was talking about me in an interview about how he had met me and that he had been like abused by my dad. And I don't actually, Wait, what? Think, Wait. Well, well, here's, uh, here's a story. And I don't, I don't actually, textually I'm confused. I don't actually think it was my dad and I, I don't mean. <laughs> to, I, I don't mean to, cha to challenge you on this, uh, uh, Joe, but um, Mark uh, Mendoza and my dad have at many times looked identical. They are the same height, uh, always in sunglasses, gigantic afro. All you need is just like a little bit of shadow or whatever, and it's very easily... Mark the Animal Mendoza. So, I mean, unless <laughs> unless Joe is willing to swear to me that it was the completely blonde haired, because I mean, that's it. It's, it's super blonde hair right. or super light brown hair, you know, like, but I mean, it's, it's dark. Yeah. yeah. No, it's not, there's no blonde in it, it's just, it's, but it's not like a dark, dark brown. Sun in. You know, um, like, <laughs> I think this was probably uh, done by Mendoza, who is known to have kind of done these kind of bullying type things. But it is possible that he got my dad at a bad moment because 
there was a period of time he was a bit of a dick. Um, <laughs> I'm not going to lie about that. Um, but uh, so, I mean, it's possible. Uh, I won't deny his experience. If he Extended period or just like a, a burp? Uh, I don't know. Probably a few years. <laughs> I think some of us. Uh, my mom was dealing with it. Those. My mom was dealing with it more than I was dealing with it. Uh, you know, I was still a child dealing like, with my own shit. Like, fuck man, it's steel. Yeah. No. <laughs> I know it didn't come out yet, but it will. <laughs> <laughs> no, read his book. He'll, 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 he, 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 he's, his book's freaking great. It's worth it's worth checking out. Um, but um, but anyway, uh, I'm sorry. So you're at Marvel. Oh, yeah. So I was at Marvel. Um, um, and um, I hand Joe my script. Joe hands it to Axel Alonso, who is like the friggin' editor of the Marvel Knights line at that time. And Axel Alonso has been the editor in chief of Marvel for the past like eight years or something like that. So this is like eight years ago or whatever. And he calls me. How, wait, how long? <laughs> I mean, did me. I mean, were you wait like, second, wait, but wait a second, it, this script never gets published. So wait a second. So he calls me and he tells me it's a better first draft than like most of the people who write for him. And I was like, yeah, I mean, I spent a lot of, you know, I spent a lot of time like making sure it was like something to fucking impress somebody. <laughs> you know, like I'm like, read the script. I mean, you're not drawing though. You're just writing. No, I'm writing the scripts. There's, okay. You know, nothing gets drawn without a, a script. And for the most part, there's very few people who do, do it all. Right. Um, you know, and some people, sometimes it happens Marvel style where they kind of give a basic plot and it happens. <clears throat> but largely this is, People are drawing the amount of panels that I have dictated based on the script, just like you shoot a movie based on storyboards. Yeah. Exactly. So, uh, you know, so I am the script writer and uh, I, I had submitted a two part Punisher story um, and uh, and basically he, he, he really dug it. Um, you know, and he's like, you know, I'd have some, I have some notes and, blah, 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 uh, and maybe we'll talk further. About a week later, he got promoted. To and like then, the head of Marvel, basically, and then and that was it. Or actually, that was maybe maybe it was like a series of like two promotions. Whatever the next promotion was, was an executive editor. Wait, his promotion made editor. him lose your phone number? No, essentially, his promotion made him lose his oversight over the day to day of what's going on in the Punisher. He's now overseeing another All editor of them. who is doing, see, cause as it goes with group editors, you basically go higher up the ladder. Here's one guy I'm overseeing six books, let's say right uh, above me is another guy. I'm the one doing the day to day on the six books. The guy above me is making sure that all these things are going. We're talking about it. We're formulating whatever else. He is one of the guys who's in a group of people who's going back to Joe Quesada, the editor in chief to go to, or, you know, when it was Joe at the time when I was pitching right. um, uh, to, you know, talk things. And largely, actually, the big problem with, I, I would have done a lot more work at Marvel, actually, but the, it, they're not really built to be handed good ideas. They're built to hand out good ideas. And at the time I was pitching them, I was young and I didn't drink and I didn't, wasn't really, I, I, I like would socialize at the conventions, but like, I wasn't like anybody's drinking 28, buddy. You lost the X. Yeah. Okay. Um, but, uh, but I, I wasn't anybody's like drinking buddy or anything. Right. So I didn't, um, you know, and that was really the way I think to kind of actually get work. Like, Hey man, come, I got a assignment. Come talk to me at the bar, you know, like bar and, networking. And, yeah. And live in the city. I also lived on long Island. So, you know, it was really like, I would only get people at conventions and I'd be able to send them ideas. And a lot of times my ideas would get really, really far, but they wouldn't work out. And then in general, it would lead to other things. So I bounced around and I did, uh, had a Deadpool short that finally, uh, eventually got in, uh, through a whole bunch of friends and whatever else, uh, to, uh, Marvel Comics Presents. It actually took that thing freaking three years to come out, which is like crazy. Really? It's everything that I did took years to come out for most part. It was really annoying. Uh, and uh, and then I did a Hulk one shot because the, 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 and all my editors kept leaving and quitting, firing. It was amazing. And But but other editors would pick me up. So like they would be like, hey, I really like the thing that you worked on with so-and-so. And I would get like moved on to the new editor and he'd be like, I got a Hulk thing. And then I was able to do something else. That's like being handed new wives. It was weird. And then I had like through a friend of a friend friend, Dan DiDio, who was the editor-in-chief of uh, DC Comics, um, I ran into him at a convention, and we had a very good mutual friend, and I just kind of said hi on his behalf, and he was asking me, you know, fandom or whatever, and I said, I'm actually a comic book writer, I've, I, I just wrote some stuff for Marvel, and they were, and he was like, oh yeah, he's like, well, write a Batman uh, uh, inventory script for us, and um, if it's good, you know, we'll hire you for something, so I was like, awesome, or he said a Batman or a Superman, so I had one cool one about, like, Superman kind of being Jesus. Your polar opposites? Yeah, uh, yeah, exactly, I, yeah. I, yeah, I had one cool one about, like, Superman kind of being Jesus, and, like, basically, the, the, somebody, like, separated him from the planet uh, and was going to destroy the rest of the planet, because they, he, they, the dude judged that the only person on the planet who was worthy was him, and, and put him from the, from the planet, and he 
and Superman had to sit there and plead our case and be like, holy shit, yeah, that's I, heavy. That was what I was going to do. But I thought it was a little too heavy, like a little too like preachy or whatever. But I was like, I was like, I thought it was a good one. And then instead I did this killer fucking Batman one shot an April Fool's Day special where the Joker, you know, the Joker, basically the whole premise was every April Fool's Day, watch out. If, right. If Joker can, he will, <laughs> you know, that's his day. And, um, and it, a lot of things got lifted just like through like the ether in Dark Knight and Dark Knight came out like a year or two after this thing. Not Wait, only Dark Knight, the Nolan Dark Knight, yeah, the Heath Nolan Ledger. Dark Knight. not only did I write this thing and it was drawn and never came out. It's still in their vaults. They've never released it. Because, really? Well, because then they did the new 52 and it didn't make sense for them to release it. And I kept trying to get my damn editor to release it. And I said, I wrote you an April Fool's Day special so you could just fucking release it at whatever time you wanted to. And you see if it fucking released it. April Fool's. Yeah. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, I figured this was foolproof. I'm like, I'm not going to write them an inventory story. I'm going to write them an April Fool's Day special. Ha ha. My smart ass. And they well, didn't. What were the, wait, what were the things that you wrote that were in the dark night? Oh, I mean, are you saying like you guys looked at that, my story? Th no, 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 oh, okay. not at all, not at all. It's it just ironic. Just, it was just happenstance. Okay. Although I did get ripped off from the Dark Knight, um, at, which not wasn't on purpose either. It just it got traveled up the ranks. My Punisher story I told you about. Yeah. This was many, many years before the Dark Knight. Well, right. I should say, Max, right on the cusp as we were, we were coming Knight, up 2008, to it. 2008, 2009. Yeah, I did. Um, my two. Page Punisher, two issue Punisher story. My villain that I was introducing, I was trying to introduce a Joker for the, the Punisher. Punisher. So I had a guy who had a smiley face that had been scarred into his face from the Vietnam War because he had the button on his pack and they tortured him and they cut down, they left him alive and they had sewn this back up and he's become this like torture technician and he was featured in my script. Well, Axel gets promoted. He's overseeing more things. One of the things that he's like frontlining himself is this Supreme Power book with J. Michael Stradinsky. And then there's these, these offshoot miniseries that they decide to do. Offshoot miniseries, who's in charge of that? The editor in charge, which is him, because this is his little side project. But he's an executive editor now. So he's got Nighthawk, who is Marvel's Batman. So he wants to do... Marvel's Joker. So what does he do? He puts this clown who has scars in his face, just like my character that he had just read about just a year earlier or whatever. In the I'm Punisher. Sure, yeah, I'm sure he forgot. No, in the Nighthawk. Yeah, in my Punisher. Yeah, yeah, in your and Punisher. And so he puts it in Nighthawk. And Dev David Goyer is a comics guy. I'm fairly certain he... Would have seen that in the two years it was promoted. They that picture went around. You know, I think there's a decent chance he could have seen that, or at the same time he could have just picked it up. But I do think there's a pretty decent chance he could have seen that because it was it, it was the feature of that miniseries. Yeah, but never before, never before was the Joker portrayed with nope. Like no, the Glasgow smile, no scars on his face, nope. And then they did it in the movie, and I was like, and I was like. Did you see the trailer and go, whoa, 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 what? What? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Did you call well, them? And then when I saw the movie and I saw the bridge scene, I was like, whoa. Wait, which one? Oh, wait. my whole thing was he he basically he does a major terrorist attack and he's got this whole thing going down. Um, but um, but you know, he's just you know, it was like he was fucking with them. <laughs> You know, like, you know, like, it was April Fool's, <laughs> but like, it was very elaborate, you know, like, you know, and the whole, you know, and it was, it's, a, it's a really great little Batman story. Um, uh, Joker and Batman, uh, Joker plays the kill people with your car game with Joker. I mean, with Batman hanging behind his car. Hey, Bats, have you ever played the kill people with your car game? <laughs> Wait, were you gonna do the laugh too? I was like, holy shit! I, I couldn't help myself; it was coming out. It's coming out on me. I'm a voice director. This is what I do. So wait, how? But how do? You, but okay, so how do you go from th the show, fuck them, right, to now being like, like y y you're not just doing just one thing that like people like me would like to do. You're doing all the things that people like me would want to do. Oh, well, I was doing the comics while I was uh, leading up to Rock the Cradle and all that stuff. So I've been doing it like through that. Where do you find period. like where do you find time to like sit down and get in your head? And then how do you get it out of your head? Um, 
You know, it's funny. I, I, everybody always is like makes a big deal like, oh, my God, when do you sleep or whatever? Uh, but I mean, like, I tend to feel like oh, I wish I could like I know what I'm capable of. You know, I used to do an eight page pullout for my uh, my college newspaper every week for the newspaper. I would produce eight pages. I was the a &E editor and cover uh, inside cover. Uh, and then one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, I don't know, five pages of material because I had a big ad on the back, right? right? So five pages of material, and I only had like three writers. So I would be writing centerfold stories plus two, three additional articles and doing everything else plus helping with graphic design every week. Um, and when I, when I need to, I can do it. So it bothers me when like I'll have a lot of stuff in my mind and things I want to do and I'm like, I'm not getting them out because like I know I can and uh but sometimes I you know like, for, do you get for, manic about it do you like I gotta get I, I gotta like um not really I you know what I've been dealing with for the past like five years I, I, I had a crazy um big realization <laughs> and I, and uh I'll, I'll say long story short is I've had a series of ailments and injuries um throughout my life right. um a very important one was when I got hit by a car when I was 13 no, not 13, maybe like 12. Uh, I hit my car, run across the street. I smashed the windshield with my head. Um, Holy shit. Cracked their windshield, hit the ground. It bent my bike frame. And um, You're on your bike? Yeah. And I didn't know it for a good 15 years later or whatever. Uh, but Wait, what? I injured my foot really bad. And because I injured my foot and well, I wasn't really much of a complainer, I almost went deaf because I had ear infections and I didn't say anything essentially. Um, and I, I was like deaf in one ear and uh, almost deaf in the other ear. I Is your mom like, why do you say shit? Oh yeah. Well, they, th I, I never heard them. They couldn't hear me. You know, I couldn't hear them. I was, just, I was, and I was like, re oh, I was reading lips apparently. So, I mean, this was when I was younger. So, but I mean, but this was, this kind of just, uh, shows what kind of kid I was. So I had like an injury. I was just kind of like, yeah, I got hit by a car. You know? Right. It'll be fine. You know, right. it'll be, whatever. It's just a leg. And what, I, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, and what I didn't realize was because, you know, the doctors didn't tell me there was any problem or anything else. Uh, my, uh, my bone, you know, was out in my foot Ugh. and um, slowly my equilibrium changed into the basically inner, left or uh, inner right thigh of my right foot which was good wait so your center of you yeah is, so, is off so kilter. i so because we couldn't we couldn't actually put weight on this leg even though i didn't realize that was the case and i just tilted so all of a sudden for my whole life and i'm a national champion semi-pro football player lacrosse player uh swimmer uh track and field pole vaulter um you know i mean like i i play sports uh, now I have you ever been to space <laughs> no, not yet. I'm, I'm just, just trying to figure out what you I haven't to, done. I used to BMX ride. That's when I got hit by the stupid car. Um, and, um, you know, I, uh, oof, I basically just twisted my body, uh, you know, over time. Right. And additionally, I, I'm not anymore, but I used to be really tense and I, I, like jumpy or angry no, or tense, like, you know, like, like motherfucker. Yeah. Like I was a clenched fist, you know, like, ah, you know, like I thought I could muscle everything. That's how I played football. The silent scream. Yeah, man. I mean, I was, I am getting down that field and you are not going to fucking get in my way. You understand? You know, that kind of just, I don't, like, I'm not getting hurt. I'm not, I mean, do you, see, do you remember like, you're like, I don't see the rest of the game. I see that guy. Well, me, I, it's funny because if, if people would always try to race me because right. they, I, in the games, I would be like lightning and I would always lose the races because I wasn't good at just running. But, <laughs> but if I saw a ball or I saw a guy. With the ball. Right. That's it, man. I'm getting there first because <laughs> I'm going to tackle him. <laughs> you know, like I have something to do. You're like, Who's the but when I'm Dark running, Knight, like I was just like running. Why are we doing this? You know, like running. I couldn't get my heart in that the same way. I couldn't get in the zone. Like when I'm in the zone in the game, it was just like chasing a rabbit. So I tensely, tightly put all my weight on my right uh, side of my body. And ultimately I, I flipped my hips. Which really? I, which I just flipped back recently. I'm, I'm really proud. How does that happen? happy about that how tense I was in the, and the position that I was in. So slowly as these muscles are tightening in whatever ways in my hips, it just started to turn because now all the pressure's coming, you know, this way I'm twisting up. And then I, I had, and it's Do funny. Do you feel like a slow I'm, agony? I, let, let me, let me give you a little piece of advice here. I had a mention that I had a little bit of scoliosis maybe 
uh, from a nurse. And I can remember begging her not to say anything to my dad because I was nervous that they would take me out of football. And I never would say anything about like being hurt because I didn't want to miss games and stuff like that. So I used to get hurt like a decent amount. But I always just thought like, I'll heal. You know, I'll be well, where, right. do, where, do you, where do you think you got all that competitive? I don't know. Gusto. It's, it's funny. I'm not like a violent person or like angry you know like i don't like to like hurt people or something like that i said competitive i didn't say no 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 almost no. idle no 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 <laughs> I, no i know you didn't but i but i was thinking about this recently like just because uh because i i think my mom me and my mom had like a, a an altercation when i was a kid that i that i am still not that's still sour about but i i was you know i'm still upset that she doesn't she doesn't see that you're right. No, no she doesn't understand why. <laughs> I like, thought I was she, talking about my mom. She, I'm she, sorry. she, she doesn't. She, she doesn't really believe me. I don't think. She, she thought like I told her. I, I, I she was kind of. She was, she was thinking that I was like trying to physically intimidate her and oh she thought you were getting aggressive yeah she thought oh. i was getting aggressive and she like hit me like kind of beat me up a little bit because she thought i was trying to get aggressive with her and i was trying to reason with her <laughs> and i just like said it in a way that was ambiguous enough like that she was like are you threatening me <laughs> like i was like what no <laughs> like, wait did she grow up on long island yeah she's an italian oh. whatever like and she was feeling like my oldest son he's like gonna freak like so i mean i understand why she was like whatever but at the time i was really mad you know that she thought i was like but i was a football player and that was the thing that i was thinking recently i'm like well she was thinking i'm a football player i'm this aggressive kid on the field or whatever but i just you know i love to I only have four win quarters and play of aggression and like week. i just i just love it i was playing dr mario the other night with some of my in-laws man i was whooping ass man you know like <laughs> like you know and i mean I'll, you know I'll, I'll, you hit level 100 somebody's like are you getting aggressive yes. it's like far I, 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 you know what it's not that i like to like beat people or anything red pill blue pill Ooh. i i like to play you know, my favorite is when I'm like evenly matched, you know, and we can like go back and forth. Well, how do you get who's a evenly Mario matched card or something? Oh, tons of people. It's a, I'm not great at everything, but I mean, like, you know, <laughs> you know but I mean, I, I, I'm reasonable. So modest. I'm reasonable. At, I, I am. I'm reasonable at everything. I, I am pretty darn reasonable at everything. Uh, there are some things that I don't know yet, but I will. What's your biggest question? What's my biggest question? Like, is there like that? Like, is there aliens out there? Is there, a, is there a Malibu UFO all face? All right, all right, all right. <laughs> is the moon a spaceship? That's no. my favorite question. No. Who says oh, that? Oh, man. That. There is an amazing is that paper LA? written by Russian scientists called uh, something like that, uh, Argument for Our Spaceship Moon or blah, 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 blah. And what? holy crap, I will just leave it there. Search this thing. Russian scientists write paper on Spaceship Moon. It is just a list of facts about the moon. That are very suspicious. <laughs> I hear a carry thing where like, the you, moon's made of green cheese. You, you, you just, <laughs> you, you will just, you, at the very least, you will leave this, 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 this paper, document. Yeah, this document going. But wait a second. <laughs> if it's not a spaceship. What is it? It's <laughs> not a moon now. I don't know. It's not quite what I thought. Thought it was. Do you like pulpy, like goofy movies? Do you ever see Iron Sky? I love Sky? everything. Oh, my favorite, my favorite quote. I was just talking about this the other day. As I quote, I, I'm like a Jim Carrey regurgitator. Lines from Jim Carrey movies, like crazy. Wait, how do you? Wait, what do you think about his? Oh, I love him. Yeah, but do you see his documentary on Netflix? Oh, I love it. I love it. Is he one of your guys? He he. Look, because he seems like he he can do he anything. And I, he and I are one and the same. He's just. Speaking about it with a bit, a little bit more cavalierly than I like to, um, but he's he is of right mind, and he is he's hit another level. I think he's really he's saying all the right things. But who would but who would think that that like Ace Ventura pet detective would be the guy that you're watching? Going I like, think the person around. I get it. <laughs> a, a person who wants to make you laugh is somebody who loves you, loves people. Right. Wants to make people happy. He he chose a path of giving and putting himself out there. His choice. But neglecting himself, too. Yeah, also. And, well, that's what Robin Williams did. And, and that's, you know, why well, we don't have him anymore. And, uh, you know, but Jim has crossed over. 
He's crossed over, he beat, and it seems like yeah, and he seems like man, uh, you know, uh, the man, uh, man on the moon, you know, was sort of the t- a turning point for him uh, as he started to, you know, my turning point was a mushroom trip that like just like I mean, actually, it started with smoking like portobellas. Weed. Or? No, start, started started <laughs> with smoking smoking weed, and then and then I experimented with mushrooms because. Wait, how do you go from being straight edge to being like? Well, I told you my drummer had yeah, convinced know, I, me that that I should try it, and he thought that I would get something out, out of it. And I mean, so, you seem like a smart dude, and usually people who have their senses and well, have, I, haven't altered them up until the 28 can make the argument that, like, I don't need it. How did he, no, how did you get? it's not a matter of don't need it, it because you do need it. You need to ch- open your mind. You're afraid to open your mind. You're afraid to change your perspective. You, you, you're happy with this. Right. I'm not happy with this. I want to understand what the fuck's going on. It, if I was running everything, I know that if I was duplicated a fucking million times over, we would not have these problems that we were having on the planet. You know, I saved a freaking owl the other day that I, that I ran into it. my car and, and, you know, people were saying like, oh man. I'm glad it was you. Other people wouldn't have done it. And I didn't even think that other people wouldn't have done it because I, I couldn't imagine not doing something. Not like doing that. something. The, the fucking thing was going to die. It was Christmas Eve. I, I felt so terrible. This poor fuck. It was a baby owl. He crashed into my car. I was like, you know. So that person who saves the fucking owl multiplied every fucking position all over the planet. We don't have these fucking problems. I fucking promise you because I've been growing up in this shithole going why are we having all these problems? Obviously, people smarter and wiser than me, a stupid, uh, optimistic kid, to like, <laughs> you know, like, like obviously those smarter people are out there, and the way, what's why does everything suck? <laughs> you know, but it's it's did you just, see that South Park episode where they did that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love South Park. I'm a huge South Park fan. Huge Everyone's like, South, South Park's Park. over. And they're like, no, we just felt cynical. Fuck <laughs> you. South Park is the greatest, greatest shit. I love them. Love them so much. See, but how did, but how did you, you said uh, mu- like mushrooms were the thing, that, like your vision quest. Well, uh, you know, well, okay. But, so, how do, but how do you go from like straight edge and, 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 and I, you're right. talking about this openly, so, so I'm assuming my, your parents my know. my brother and, um, and my other brother who are five and seven years younger than me. Oh, we got off path from talking about them earlier. Yeah, we did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. So Cody and she took the scenic route. Um, they started smoking. Um, and I guess they were like, you know, was the, this like medicinally of, LA? Of, no, this is end of high school, right. beginning of college, whatever. Um, and um, and Cody comes to me one day, and he's got it all in his mind that he's gonna he's got that big conversation he's got to have with me, and he goes, he goes, Jesse, I want to talk to you, and I go, all right, what's up? And he goes, look, I think. You should smoke some pot. And I <laughs> and I go, okay. And he goes, what? <laughs> you, go, I, good. I think we should good, burn down the good. house. Uh, okay. Like, yeah, no, yeah, exactly. What? Exactly. Essentially. Yeah. And, and, and then so he's very quickly like, oh, good, 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 good. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I, I ended up actually not smoking with him the first time. Uh, I ended up smoking in, at some uh, Comic Con party in San Diego with Seth Green and um, really, yeah, and a couple other like celebrities Wait, that was were your there. First time. It was weird. I was like surrounded by oh so Seth Green and the Zacks. Zach. Uh, Zach Zach Le- Levi and Zach Quintos. Wait, um, wait, you were with Spock? Yeah, I know. And, and I, fucking I, Chuck? I, yeah. Oh my God. I don't and like, Seth Green? I don't like know them. I know Seth a little bit. But um, but anyway, Seth invited me, asked, asked me, Seth and his wife asked me if I wanted a puff. And I had just recently decided, oh yes, I was going to try that. So I was like, sure. Um, and I don't think I actually got high. With Spock. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I ended up actually getting high at that time. Maybe a little bit. I have no idea. Yeah. I didn't really like, it, it wasn't any Anything that I was like, oh well, this is great, and I got to do this all the time. Yeah, uh, this feels like twelve beers. Yeah, certainly <laughs> didn't really like help me big time. But I was like, um, you know, that was kind of like broke the seal. And then I went home and I mentioned this to a new, a budding best friend, um, and um, and I won't mention, me- mention him by name, so I don't, uh, so I don't embarrass him. Says so I know he doesn't like everybody to know that he's uh, that he's a smoker. My mom but, now um, knows I smoke pot. But basically, <laughs> when I told him that I tried weed, he. <laughs> He lit up like a fucking, you know, like a slot machine. He was just like, oh, I suck weed. You know, but like, but like we were with people. 
we were with people, so we had to like keep that to like a like a quell. So he was sort of like a <gasps> <He's> like, <laughs> screaming at negative thirty <laughs> decibels. Yeah, yeah, he's like he's like itching his chest. You're like, <gasps> you're like oh, you know, oh. and and like my dad when he saw Michael Jackson. <laughs> yeah, and at the time I was just moving out of my house, and I saw how excited he was, and I was like, uh, I had like a whole bunch of boxes I had to move, and it was a lot of work, just organizing a bunch of shit in my house, like a lot of mindless whatever. Yeah, and I was like, let me call my friend, and um, maybe maybe we'll come over and smoke some weed with me, so we and, can move the boxes. Yeah, and mm-hmm. and we smoked, and I just one had such a great time. I was just so relaxed. I mean, at the time I didn't know that generally I was in pain all the time, but it was like low level, and I wasn't acknowledging it. Um, and, uh, like you I, didn't get like crippled stone. Do you no, got no, comfy stone? No, wonderful. I mean, I just like the greatest experiences of my life, you know, like up until but, that but, point. But, but think about pain. Like, what was that? Like, did you, do you well, remember that moment? Well, where you're like, I don't feel anything. The pain thing I didn't realize. Cause the thing that I realized immediately was, and I mean, maybe not immediately, not with that first time. I enjoyed that first time, but quickly me and my friend continued to, you know, be kind of smoke buddies. And we would enjoy, so enjoyed, you know, I so enjoyed hanging out with my friend, being re- really relaxed to talk to a friend. And, yeah. uh, you know, and, and he and I uh, were both fathers and, uh, you know, we both have kids about the same age. We're great friends and my our, our wives are best friends. So, you know. Um, I think you just gave away who it is. <laughs> no, there's, no, I didn't. No, I didn't. You can't look that up. I don't think so. I don't think you can look that up. At least I he will say, know that you're talking I would about say, him. Oh, yeah, His he knows. wife might know. He does. Yeah, they know. Are his kids of age, um, they will know. <laughs> but um, <laughs> but anyway, um, I uh, realized I had anxiety, major anxiety, and it was sort of like a whoa. You mean I don't have to feel like that anymore? Did you always feel like you're gonna jump out of your skin? So, yeah, yeah, I was like, I, I a lot of the time, and I was like. What the fuck? Like, wait a second. So it never turned into like a panic attack? No, it was like. It was just constant anxiety. No, yeah. Well, I didn't realize I had anxiety until I saw that there was a thing that wasn't anxiety. I just thought that sometimes. Everybody was like that. Sometimes you're like freaked out and you're (laughs) like, you know, like quietly. Freaking Jesse, why are you in the snow in your underwear? <laughs> I can't breathe. It's none of your fucking business. What? I, I don't know. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. I was generally I was Go in the house, mom. Make Mrs. My, Grass. My mom my mom's nickname for me in the house was Hitler. Hitler. Because I was very snappy. And now I realize it, again, it was it was really my body pain that turned into anxiety, I think. Um, because I was I was just kind of like always on edge, uncomfortable and on edge. Yeah. yeah. And I didn't know why I just, I, I just was in this sort of state and really kind of the only way I wasn't on edge. Well, <laughs> this is funny to say this. The only way I wasn't on edge, if I was slamming my body into somebody else's freaking body, playing football and feeling sore and in the, in the getting sore, being hurt. Healing, Cause you don't have time to better. think about it. Yeah. Just like, that was like, I, I, I kind of love that. Like being in the cradle of, Oh no, must heal. Mm. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I mean, really like I, I get, something out of the that bowl and spinning the thing around well, no 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 i wasn't smoking at that stage so I, I was not i was never smoking when i when i played football i was well, that was uh, i'd stopped playing football uh, no i meant then. like the tibetan bowl i didn't mean like the, oh no yeah <laughs> I didn't mean like the, sage uh, burn some sage yeah yeah hell, yeah. Uh, yeah no i had actually i had stopped playing football oh, because frankincense of, and myrrh oh because nice of All right. some injuries that i was um dealing with <laughs> that um that kept like kind of flaring up and I was just like, ah, oh, damn it. Uh, and largely like my shoulders and a, a couple of things that I, that I was dealing with. And I was just like, don't be stupid, Jesse. You don't want to really permanently hurt yourself. Right. <laughs> Little did I know, <laughs> um, you know, and then basically, um, you know, uh, one leg sh- three feet shorter than the other. <laughs> yeah. Nobody, um, what are, you, what are you the lead singer of Weezer? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, when I was smoking That's the weed, fucking terrible, it took man. away my anxiety, made me feel a lot better, and I guess took the edge off my pain. Whether but I did you have like an epiphanal not. moment? Were you oh, like, oh well, yeah, my big God. time with the anxiety. I was just like, holy crap! And then also, I had gone through some some periods of depression, and that too was just like you know largely subdued at the very least as soon as I found weed. Um, and then um, once I was open to that, uh, like once I had a good experience with that, I immediately remembered that I had always said that one day I'm going to take some psychedelics because Steve Jobs absolutely, and look this up, said that he would not have invented Apple computers 
if not for an LSD trip in college. So I looked into psychedelics. I read this. And this I legit. and I came up with um, you know, what I thought was a smarter plan after looking at all the psychedelic options. I just heard LS, well, LSD is <laughs> LSD is synthetic. And, I, I would never. And mushrooms are from the earth. Are mushrooms? So I was just like. Fuck it, man. I'm gonna eat the fucking vegetable, you know, and Did you throw uh, up and go for it. No, I had the it was the greatest experience of my life. And my wife was like, well, "What about like when we got married and like when like when we we had our first kid and stuff?" Nope. And I said, "Honey, I have never been so relaxed enough to feel as good as I felt while I was on, on the mushrooms. mushrooms. I, I it was I was I was really angry at like the government and like immediately for keeping it from me." Right. I was so pissed off. I was like, <laughs> I was like, wait, I never thought you would say that. I was like, are you fucking joking? I'm like, I just got smarter. <laughs> what the fuck? Who fucking kept this from me? You know, like I was so angry because the literally government. I felt like, I felt like I turned on level two of my brain and it's not fucking, oh, you're in drugs. No, nah, man. Mm -mm. Level two of your fucking brain. Totally on. The problem is most of the people do this when they're idiots. They do it when they're kids. They yeah. do it when nobody tells them. All the stories that you hear about bad mushroom trips are people who were never told that they were given fucking mushrooms. It's always like a, and I had this brownie. Oh God, man. <laughs> Holy shit. And there was the devil there and I was naked on the car. And like, you know, if you read and what you're going to do. a case of Zima. Yeah. <laughs> if you, if you read about it and know what the experience is going to be and know how it's going to go, it is just a freaking joyous experience. Where, where did you do this at your first time? I, I ended, it was weird. I was supposed to do it with a friend and I ended up, I decided I was going to do it by myself because I had like a limited window. No, you window. didn't. Yeah, I had a limited window of when I could and I'd spent a lot of time reading about it. So I was just kind of like, you know, I feel like I really know what it is and it, and largely it's just, if you keep a positive attitude, you're going to have a positive experience. And I had had myself set up. I had some music I liked, my toys. I used to have a toy thing before it burned down. My I had a toy city and I had a massive toy collection. I had probably one of the biggest toy collections um uh, in, in, in the United States. Um, <laughs> Can I and, make a joke about that? Yeah, sure. The land of melted plastic. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and, um, and so I was like, well, I'm stacked with cool things to do. And um, I want to play my know, Transformers. I can. Yeah, I and, and I might not be able to do it if I wait. Right. So I was just like, my neighbors are hippies. My my old neighbors were hippies. You know, for fifties hippies, or whatever. So I went next door and I said, Hey, look, guys. Um, I don't mind. I hope you don't mind me asking this, but, uh. I, I got some mushrooms and I want to take them <laughs> and I think that I'm going to be fine. Um, and I'd really like, uh, you know, really want to have the experience and I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to do it. Um, and, uh, I mean, just, just pleasantly case, like this, like borrowing salt. Yeah. And I'm like, okay. I'm like, but just in case, are you guys, were you guys cool? Like if I need like a lifeline, would you be willing to like, you, you know, know, if I get nervous or scared or anything, do you mind if I come over here? Yeah. And, um, and, uh, they said, Oh yeah. Sweetheart, absolutely no problem. Like, and I knew, I knew they would. Like, I knew what, what type. They're wonderful, wonderful people. And My I, heat and broke. I knew, Can I come yeah, over? But I, and I knew that they, that they would. That that was you know normal language for them. Right. You know, within reasonability. I, I, they loved me. I think I like flipped. Uh, they're you know, the lesbian couple, and I think I totally flipped uh, Barb on men. She, she, <laughs> generally, generally, she doesn't like men, but every time she would hang out with me, she was always kind of like. <laughs> Funny, all of our toys are shaped that way. Yeah, 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 yeah. exactly, exactly. It's gonna be fucking awesome. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be fucking awesome. Do, 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 do. It's gonna be fucking awesome. Wait till you see. It's gonna be fucking awesome. Listen with me.